Hello everyone, my name is Nick and in today's video I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide to how to do projection photography at home and in my case in my room. In this video I'm going to go through all the steps that you need to know, I'm going to go through how to come up with your theme and narrative and planning out your shots and kind of pre-production. I'm going to talk about outfit and props if you want to use or set and backdrops and things like that. I am going to talk through the kind of two different types of projection. So in my opinion there is the flat projection where you just um, project a flat image over the subject's face as well as projection mapping where you can distort often text but sometimes just smaller images and you can distort it onto different surfaces like the subject's face but it's more controlled and you can come up with some more kind of creative options. I'm also going to show you how to make these warped text uh, kind of patterns that you can project in Photoshop. I'm also going to show you how to use a free projection mapping software called MapMap to take some really creative um, portraits. And then I'm also going to take you through my shoot itself. Um, these are going to be self-portraits, so I'm going to be the subject and I'm going to take you through my sort of process of how I come up with posing and how I take the photos using a tripod. And I'm also going to do some experimentation with shutter speed. So there's a lot that's going to happen in this video. I hope it's going to be kind of a comprehensive guide for you on how to do projection mapping photography. But just before we start, I've noticed that the vast majority of people who watch my videos, 99% um, are not subscribed. So please go below the video and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. That would be great. And also give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it as well. Let's just get straight into the tutorial. I think it's important that before you start shooting that you come up with a bit of a plan or at least plan out your sort of themes and your narrative and your ideas behind the shoot. I had this retro TV so I knew that I wanted to do my shoot surrounding the theme of sort of technology and I also just really liked the imagery of having the static on the TV um, as a light source as well so that's kind of where my ideas spark from. And as you can see, I'm doing a bit of a mind map just to come up with these ideas. I liked the word static on its own, so I was then thinking of other words that I could project. Things like no signal, error, withdrawal to kind of link into the ideas of sort of addiction to technology. I then wanted to think about the background. So I have this like heat reflective blanket um, that I have in my house and I thought it would be really cool because it would be reflective and kind of links into that idea of self-reflection, feeds back into that kind of main overall theme. So all of your choices regarding kind of props and set and outfits and things like that should link back into your theme. So I'd suggest the mind map is a really good idea to kind of come up with your initial ideas because it really helped me figure out what it is exactly that I want to use um, and how you know an outfit which I decided would be kind of like a solid colour maybe like a yellow um, that kind of solid colour would stand out against the reflection of the foil background so it's just about planning it out and thinking what would work before you just go straight into the shoot. Here you can see I'm just starting to plan out a few of my shots that I want to get because I think if you plan out beforehand at least a few shots that you want to get and you know you're going to get then when you actually come to the shoot you can get those shots and then experiment and get some new ones as well so that way it's a win-win that you might get some bonus shots rather than just going in and winging it. Um, so I'm just doing these little thumbnail drawings and they're pretty awful but it's just to sort of get a bit of an idea of composition and I'm using the yellow um, as a way of marking out where I want kind of bits of the projection to happen and just making a few notes to myself like maybe about the lighting or the type of lens that I want to use or whereabouts I want the projection or something to do with the posing just so I get a bit of a visual cue for when I start my shoot itself so I can get some shots that will be effective and ones that I had planned for and that I know will come out well. Now that I've finished my pre-production and coming up with my themes and sketches for shots that I want to get, I need to set up my set ready for the shoot. 
Okay, so now that I've cleared a space for the photos, what I need to do now is put up the backdrop. Now, like I mentioned, I've got this sort of heat blanket reflective, basically big sheet tin foil, as well as this kind of plastic sheeting as well. So I'm literally just gonna tape up my wall with masking tape. And so yeah, I'll do that. Okay, so as you can see, I've set up the background and I've also set up the projector. Now, there are a few things to bear in mind when setting up your camera and projector. First of all, I set up my camera, which I placed on a tripod, as I'm going to be taking self-portraits, so I'm going to be using the timer, so I need my camera to be fixed in place. After that, I set up my projector. My projector I placed underneath my camera, so it wouldn't obstruct the frame. You can see here that the circle represents the subject, so myself. You want to make sure that when your projector is turned on, the frame of the projector goes beyond the frame of the camera. That way, when you come to doing your projection later on, your images are going to fill the entire frame of your photograph as well as when we do projection mapping, you can have your image wherever you want in within the frame and it's not gonna get cut off because the projector doesn't stretch that far. So you're gonna need to bear in mind the distance of which your projector is from the wall because depending on the throw of the projector, you might need to adjust the distance so it can cover the right spacing on the wall. My projector uses an HDMI cable, which I have hooked up to my computer, which I'll explain about using the software a bit later on, but sometimes this might be a VGA cable, so you just need to check which, with whichever projector you are using. So the projector I'm using is a brand called NEC. Actually, I was very lucky in that there was an office nearby who were closing down and basically giving away the stuff for free. So I actually got this projector for free, but I'll try and link some projectors down in the description below. Obviously, if you've already got one, then great. If not, a cheap one can do. You see those videos of making your own projector using your phone and like a shoebox. So maybe that might work too. You just have to experiment a bit. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to my laptop and set up the designs in which I'm gonna project. So as you can see, here are the images that I am going to be projecting. So it's a mixture of these sort of text ones and some sort of different patterns and designs. But yeah, so here are just a few of the different um, designs that I'd come up with. A mixture of ones that I'd made myself and ones that I'd found on royalty-free websites such as Pexels and Pixabay, as well as a few videos like these cool um, sort of Super 8 film things I thought would be quite cool to try and kind of fit into that idea of technology and TV and stuff like that. So these designs here, I'm going to show you quickly in Photoshop how you can create your own kind of text designs like this. Okay, so I'm now in Photoshop. I've got the old free version, CS2, but this will work in whichever version um, you've got. What you want to do is you want to click on the text icon up the side, and you want to type in your text. So I'm just going to replicate one of the ones I did before. Um, I think it works quite well to sort of repeat in either a column, or you can also make them go out and you know create kind of more square shapes like that um, i'm going to keep mine as a column if you select the text and you go up to this little folder button you can do things like you can adjust the spacing between the words i want to keep it quite tight you can make it bold you can adjust the kind of you can kind of stretch them and walk them that way um, but I'm going to leave it pretty similar. Okay, so now you have your text. What we then want to do is you want to right click on the layer and you want to click on this rasterize type. This basically just makes it like a normal layer and not a text layer. And then you're going to control T, which is the transform tool. And you're going to right click and click on warp. 
now what you can do is you can use these little points all around and you can just kind of have fun with it and sort of you know make bits wider curve it around you can even kind of curl things over like that so it looks more kind of 3d you can do whatever you want really and then you just click the tick once you're done and there you are that's how you kind of make that warp effect and what i've did um for if i show you for like these withdrawal ones and the static ones i then just took the rectangular flex tool and just took a portion within the design where it will fit and then click select inverse and delete and then you get this cool kind of warped text that fits within a square which looks quite cool so yeah that's how you simply quite easily create different effects Once you've downloaded Map Map, um, it's free, I'll leave a link in the description below. This is the icon, you just want to open up the program, and this is the kind of main page. So firstly what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add your projection image that you're going to first work with. So I'm going to click on this kind of film strip with the plus sign. You then want to open up the folder which has all your projection in, and choose the one that you're going to work with first. I think I'm going to work with this one, this error one, so we we'll want to click open and you can see over here what's happened is it's been added in uh, into your library section as a PNG. You Then what you're going to want to do is you want to click this button here, this square. You can choose a circle, a triangle or a rectangle but I just find rectangles easier and this basically adds it as a layer and now you can see this top one is your input editor so this is where you're going to kind of change and um, kind of manipulate the positioning and then this output editor is what it's going to look like on your projection. So you want to come up to the top and you want to click on view and where it says display controls you want to click on that. So now you can see what you can do is if you come down to the output editor you can sort of play around with the position where you want it depending on where your subject is. So if you then come up to this button here, the toggle full screen, and you click on that, what you'll see is now the screen is completely black apart from your image. And now um, what you can do is you can look, so here you can see that I'm using um, the TV. And so what you can do is you can just use the points and you can shift it around and shape wherever you want it to go. So this process takes quite a lot of trial and error and you just want to kind of play around with it and once you kind of get it in a position you like you then want to go back up to the top onto view and then uncheck display controls and you're ready to start shooting. I'm going to be using my Canon 700D and a 22mm and 50mm prime lenses. For these first few photographs I decided to do the flat projection technique where I literally just opened up an image in the standard viewer not in map map and just projected it over my face. Now I'm not a model as you can probably tell I'm just using my hands to try and create shadows on the face to create some interesting compositions and photographs. If I can do this, you can do. For these next photos, I use one of the Super 8 video, which I again just opened in the standard player and just try to line up the trees with my neck to create an interesting contrast between my neck and face. This one utilised text but I just decided to have it go all over the face to create a cool effect. Now I decided to bring in the TV to start with my projection mapping photographs. This first one uses the error and as you can see I've included my recording of my laptop screen in real time in the bottom left. 
so you can see the complete trial and error process of trying to create these the best compositions and the best coverage on my face. I'm literally, as I am sitting there, I'm working on my computer and I keep just checking the viewfinder on my camera to find out which positioning works best on where I am situated in the frame. And then once I like what I'm doing, I just turn off the display controls and shoot. Here I've been using a little LED light which I've placed a couple of gels on. I'm now changing to a red gel for the next series to match the text that I'll be using. For this one I had this clear vision that I planned out before, having the withdrawal text on my back and me facing away into the static of the TV. This was one of the ones that I planned out at the beginning in pre-production and I'm glad that I did because I'm really happy with how these ones turned out. This next one I decided to change up the angle of the camera as a more of the over the shoulder type photograph. And for this one I really wanted to get the gap of the no signal in the middle to cover my eyes because I thought that would create an interesting intrigue and mystery. For these next ones I just wanted to experiment with having a longer shutter speed of a few seconds. What you can see is I'm just doing very subtle movements, just moving my hand slightly. Too much movement would just make the whole image blurred so it's about finding that balance. As I'm sure it was obvious I'm not a model so if I can do this then you definitely can. It just takes a lot of trial and error and just figuring out where you'd like the projection. Just take your time with it and you'll come up with some really awesome photos. So I hope you enjoyed my video on how to do projection mapping photography. If you did, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the button below the video and leaving a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And let me know in the comments which one of my photos was your favourite as I'd be really interested to know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next Sunday with another video.